Now it is time for you to die, Wookie. Oh no! I am not your father. Sorry, didn't see you there. Um, doing what academics do best when they've got a whole pile of marking to do, which is find something else more fun to do instead. Um, today's video, I'm going to show you how to um, make the sound effect from the uh, laser blaster from Star Wars, which is why I've got Chewbacca and Darth Vader here having a bit of a, a slanging match. Um, so most of you will be familiar with the um, laser sound from Star Wars. It goes something a little bit like choo -choo or something like that. And uh, when I was about seven years old, um, I was allowed to watch uh, Empire Strikes Back when it first came onto television. It was after my bedtime, so my dad had to tape it on the VCR, which, is, uh, which had just come out at that stage. It was like the new toy of the early 80s. And um, we had a four hour tape, and so we just let it start running and tape, and everyone went to bed and came back the next morning. And at the end of uh, Empire Strikes Back, they showed a really interesting documentary called SPFX, which was about the special effects they used to make um, Empire Strikes Back, and everything from the blue screening that they did from the characters to how they made the um, spacecraft crash and explode, right through to some of the sound effects. And one of the things I remember most from that show was how they made the sound of the Star Wars laser pistols. And the way they do it is they go and they find a, a 200 foot uh, radio transmission tower and the tower has a uh, set of wires that run down to hold it so that it doesn't fall over. And if you go to one of those wires and you just hold a microphone to the side of it and you hit it with a spanner, you will get the sound that uh, they use for the laser pistols um, in Star Wars. And there's another way to do it, um, which is to use a slinky. So um, I'll set it up and uh, show you how it works. So the trick is to take a slinky and you uh, suspend it from somewhere high above the ground and you suspend it such that the end of the slinky is just sitting on the bottom of the floor. You don't want too much coiled up at the bottom but it does need to be able to touch the floor. So with your slinky hanging from somewhere nice and high, um, all you need to make this sound is a way of amplifying the sounds that are coming out of the slinky and there's two ways to do this. One is you can use a microphone. I've got mine connected to a PA system sitting behind me, but um, it's equally good if you have a microphone connected to a camera. You need to couple the microphone into the slinky, and I find the best way to do that is just to stick it in between the coils, like so. And then you can make your noise by uh, just simply playing with a spring, and you can do everything from just giving it a tap or a flick. Through to if you want to make explosion sort of noises playing with the spring lever. Through to if you want to make the Star Wars laser sound, where you I find the best way to do it is to just pick the spring up and drop it on the floor, and then just after you want to catch it to try and stop the echo. So let's do that. So I can do drop, catch, and there you've got your Star Wars laser sound. If you don't happen to catch the spring, you get an echo. Like so. And so it's just a matter of catching the spring before you get your first echo. Like so. If you're not fortunate enough to have a microphone, uh, there's another way to do this, and all you need is just a sounding board. Um, one way to do it is to stick it onto the back of an acoustic guitar, for example. But if you're really on the, um, on the fly with this, you can do it with something as simple as a foam cup. And so the easiest way to do this is just to jam the foam cup in between the coils somewhere. And the foam cup then acts to amplify the sound in the slinky. And so you can then get back your laser blaster sound. And if you're really fortunate and you have both, you can even uh, use a microphone to amplify what comes out of the foam cup and get a slightly different sound to it. It's much more high pitch. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll 
let you play around with that for yourself um, by changing the spring that you use and by changing the material that you use for the cup and so forth, you can sort of play around with the sound and, and really optimize it if you want to. So for some brief explanation for why this works, the sound that happens in the spring um, occurs because higher sound frequencies travel faster through the spring than lower sound frequencies. And so when you drop the spring on the floor, you get a whole pile of frequencies excited in the spring and they will travel up the spring, okay? And the fast ones will travel faster than the slower ones and so they will bounce off the top and come back down and when they get picked up by the microphone, the microphone picks up the, the higher frequency ones first because they're traveling faster, so you go like ch, and then it will pick up the slightly slower ones, so you get a ch, and then we'll pick up the slowest ones last and so you'll have this ch sound, okay? And that's why you end up with this laser beam sound that's going on in there. Anyway, it's an uh, interesting demo of just from a physics perspective in terms of understanding how sound travels through materials, but it's also kind of fun and uh, for those of you kids out there who are making home movies and so forth, it might be a good way to sort of jazz up your sound effects a little bit.